Hello. I have been asked to show my three-point leveling for the Ender 2. So I'm going to get into it. I'm not going to do as deep of a dive as my previous leveling and bed tramming videos. Look those up. Uh, that'll tell you how to get your machine really in order. Bed leveling is all important. The first layer is very important. So a few things to know. First of all, the Ender 3 has three bed leveling knobs. I'm actually going to set these a little bit off so I can show you the level. Three bed leveling knobs. One, two, three in a triangular position. To many people, it doesn't make very much sense because it's a square plate, but actually three knobs is your most ideal situation because any flat plane will touch three points in space. In this way, no matter how badly you crank down one of the knobs, you're never gonna risk bending and warping your, your bed. So the three-point system is great. Um, a couple of pointers that I wanna point out is before running a leveling program, you want to heat up your machine, your nozzle, and your bed to the temperature you're gonna be printing on because metals expand with heat and you want to be able to correct the bed level and the gap according to the temperature you're printing on. Another thing is that you don't want to move your head and your bed around manually. Number one, this sends electrical uh, generation back into your, your control unit and it could burn out your main board. But also more importantly, as you're manually moving things around, you might be changing the Z and actually destroying your own level and setup. So I'm gonna go through the process with you. I've loaded a leveling program into my G code. I'll share that G code with you in the description. Generally, if you'd like to use it, you could even alter it to your own machine needs by changing the X and the Y settings in the G code, open it up in a text file, save it, make sure it's .g code, and then you could run it like you'd run any print. You could also use the bed leveling from the machine control panel, but I prefer running it like a print code. So my G code will stop at each one of those points for a few seconds, allowing me to adjust it and then it'll keep on repeating and cycling and it speeds up the stop time so it makes it a little faster for me. The one thing you do want to remember is as you are leveling, you want to keep on adjusting slowly and you want to keep on adjusting until it will make a complete cycle around without you having to touch a knob. You don't wanna just get it all right and assume it's perfect and go because when you touch one knob, it kind of cants the rest of the plate. So let's start. I'm going to run a print from this. I'm going to run my G-code. Ender 2 level. Okay. And it's going to home first. I usually put a piece of paper on there while it homes in case there's any melted filament on the nozzle. I like to use a little bit heavier paper than copy paper. Copy paper is fine. I try to use like a 28 pound or you know a little heavier. I find that that gap is great. Sometimes for certain filaments like PETG, you need a little bit higher of a gap. So I'm feeling the resistance on the paper. I should be able to push and pull the paper underneath the nozzle with drag without it kinking. That's way too loose, so I'm gonna raise up the knob that's too tight it won't bend under i get it so i could feel that drag zzz, little pull sorry to the camera i ruined my camera woman's job um, there we go so it should have that beautiful drag it's just pulling and pushing but it's not kinking so bad that i can't push it through my g code also stops in the middle so you could check that the the bed's not warped and it's correct so I got them all pretty well dialed in, but I'm gonna go around again. If I have to touch the knob at all, I'm gonna go around one more time. That's pretty nice. Might be a little bit tight. I'll just go ahead and give it a hair. That's wonderful. You can see it bends the paper a little bit. It's kinking slightly, but I can push it through. I usually have a couple of extra sheets of paper ready in case there is film that could be a little bit tighter. I have some extra sheets of paper ready in case filament gets on this and it starts dirtying it up. 
I just use scrap paper that is a misprint. Chop it up. Plenty of use for your scraps. Okay, now, hopefully we can get around without me touching a knob. That's perfect. You notice it stops for less time at each point, making it just a more efficient system. That's very nice. If I get a perfect round, then I just stop the print. It's basically running this as if it's a print without extruding any materials. So I'm going to go ahead and stop print. Now the next most important thing we have to do is we want to do a live level. And what this means is we want to slice a model, any model you're going to print, and you want to add a couple of skirts around the model as far away as possible so that they try to get close to each one of your leveling knobs. And we visually inspect the bead that's laying down. Is it too round? Do we have to raise up the, the height of the bed a little bit, reduce the gap? Is it too squished that it's not coming out consistently? Um, and then we have to lower it. So let me have a look. I'll just print. I'll print this model. It's preparing. Once that sends it to print, we will just visually watch the bead being laid down, making sure that it's the right amount of squish and making sure that it's consistent around the print. So my code goes ahead and does a little purge. And now it's going to the print. Okay, so the first part is starting towards the left rear. Looks like a pretty nice bead. Most important thing is that the bead is not getting dragged around by the nozzle. It's getting deposited on the bed. It could be a little more squished all the way around. I'm going to turn the slightest amount on each one of the knobs. I usually do two or three live levels. This is a great habit to always slice your models with it and then you'll find you don't have to level as frequently because you just do a live level as it's going. That's really perfect. So my first level is now going down. We could come back in a second just to see the quality of the first level. But you'll notice that the bead is slightly flat. It's a little bit wider than it is high. It's stuck down. It wasn't dragged around any corners. We don't have anything, especially on fast corner turns. You don't have anything that's just uh, a double line or a misprint. What we can do is we can come back in a little while after the first layer is printed and have a look at the quality of that, hopefully. I'm printing on the Wham Bam Flexible Build System and this PEX is a wonderful material for attract attracting all filaments. But you could print on glass bed with the same results with glue, glue stick, hairsprays, tapes, um, on PC, anything you like. Basically, the only differences between different bed surfaces are the gap settings. Some materials you really have to squish that first layer down and some you don't need it as much. And once you get this right, the first layer is always a breeze. So maybe in a second if this moves back you'll be able to see the quality of the first layer. There we go. You see that first layer? Really beautiful. Just laid down smoothly, complete. No hairs or strings, nothing pulling up. And that's it. I hope this was simple and clear. Try it out on your own. I also do have four point bed leveling G codes in uh, my other videos. You could find those, but this is for the Ender 2, the three point bed leveling. Thank you.